want to make sure I take a moment to thank the people that help make this video possible. I consider you producers of this channel and of this show. Without your support, these videos would not be possible. So I'd like to thank Rags, Comic Boom, Pop Size, The Frag Minion, Warren JB, Lynch Nut, David Ossenwitz, sorry if I mispronounced your name, and a penny for your dimes. I also want to thank the people that like to remain anonymous and anybody else that has contributed to this channel in the past. Without your support, these videos would not be possible. If you find yourself in a position you can help and you want to see your name here too as a producer credit, go ahead and look down in the links below. There will be a Patreon, a subscribe star, as well as a one-time donation, and you can see your name up here too. Thank you. Hello, Fruit Force. This is Captain Frugal reporting for duty. Yes, the Frugal Stir, whatever you want to call me. <laughs> uh, I hope you paid attention to the intro too. I just want to take a moment before I get into this video once again to say thank you to all the producers that help with this channel. Otherwise, this stuff would not be possible. So anyway, for you that followed, uh, you know the Frugal Force. We love our arcade games. And not too long ago, Little Frugal and I got this unit here, this Pandora's Box 9. We did review it, so if you are interested in a Pandora's Box, this is one of them you might want to check out. Uh, I did do a thorough review. Uh, definitely look at it on our channel. We did it very in-depth. We actually used this unit here for our live stream that we did. Now that's no longer up, but it was just up temporarily for a, it was for charity. So every dollar that went to charity, and this was the Pandora's Box 9. And we did enjoy it, but while we did enjoy it, there was a couple things that was lacking. First of all, it said it had 1,500 games. Really, I'd say a couple hundred of those at least were duplicates. Like there was four different versions, uh, which were pretty much all the same game of The Simpsons and things like that. So there was a lot of duplicates. So I'd say there was probably around 1,200 rather than 1,500, uh, which was still great. One of the games that I found so far was unplayable, which was Mortal Kombat. Uh, but once again, I don't want to get into too in depth this. Watch the video. Good Machine just didn't fulfill all our needs. So since it didn't fulfill all of our needs, I thought, you know what? Let's get another one. And so we did. And today, it came. We have this. So we're going to review this today. So I hope you enjoy this video, and let's dig in. All right, Frugal Force. So here we have it to get an idea of the size here of this box. Now, this did come just like this. Where's the Pandora? Uh, nine, the Pandora's Box Nine, the legitimate brand name of Pandora. Now, granted, I, I know how much is into that since they do have emulation and games that they don't, aren't licensed to them. But uh, it came in another box with this with this box inside of it, all wrapped up really well. Whereas this didn't come that way. It came with a box, it's taped like this. But I will say the box seems good. It seems sturdy. Uh, I didn't see any damage on it right away, so that was a good sign there. So looking at this, it says it's home entertainment, personal arcade games invite you to enjoy the new generation of games entertainment new generation but it's got a lot of old games on it go figure there it is taped up good it's got a nice handle there it looks like it was done very well uh, let's see if there's anything on the bottom of the box here that i need to be aware of. nope just all tape but it didn't look damaged at all so that that's a good sign so first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna cut open this tape and try not to kill myself here my knife i need to sharpen time to sharpen this thing Happens once in a while when you cut through a lot of tape, you've got to sharpen these knives. It's still pretty sharp, don't get me wrong. It's just not as sharp as I like. I like a good sharp knife. A sharp knife is more safe, believe it or not, than a dull knife. A dull knife causes you to push more, and that's usually where those injuries start to pile up from cutting. Okay, so we got that. So this thing is taped up pretty good. Got to get these little tabs here. It looks like there's going to be some little tabs. I'm just trying to make sure I don't cut anything I shouldn't cut. <laughs> so I'm being a little gentle. I like to stay safe. I am in my lazy gear today. Nice warm sweatshirt. You'll see you see the gray ones in a while there. Okay, I think, think I got everything cut open here that needs to be cut. Let's find out. Pull open these tabs. Oh yeah, see it's got tabs here that keeps it nice and safe and secure. Okay, good. It's got a tab here. So as you see, this box is pretty darn safe and secure there. I like that. That's one thing. Okay, we're going to fold that over. Ugh, here's the handle. All right, and it is packaged uh, like well here. Look at this. See, it's going to have, looks like it has the materials in here, and the game stick is going to be in here separate. So let's pull that out 
and see what's in there. I'm going to put this knife over here out of the way. Let's see what's in this thing. All right, we have a HDMI cable. It doesn't look like a fancy, thick HDMI cable. This HDMI cable looks a little cheap to me. Uh, not my favorite there. To, it's pretty thin. But we'll see what it is. Okay, we have this, which is a... Wow, this is for your VGA output if you're going to be putting it into a monitor, which is cool because I have multiple monitors, and I have in the past thought about using a monitor and making an arcade cab. I just don't really have room in my frugal fortress slash office unless I moved it to a different room in the house and I don't really feel like doing that right now maybe in the future but that this feels like a good solid cable with a lot of length by the way good solid lot of length all right next we have okay here we have your HDMI cable and you know what this feels like a pretty good thick one uh, to compare it to the other one, watch the other video, the Pandora's 9, you'll see it goes with a Tweed one. I think that cable's probably a little bit better quality, but this one should have no issues at all. Good cable. We have the power cord, which is going to go into the power brick. This power brick is nice and light, and it is a input 100 to 240. 50 slash 60 hertz, 1.2 amp max output, 12 volt. So there we go. All right, we also have an instruction manual. Yes, the good jolly instruction manual to show us what is up, what's going on here. It's a user manual, home version arcade machines. It's actually in color. It, that's a nice instruction manual. It's gonna show you how to hook it up using different setups as well as with arcade sticks. So that, that's a nice touch there. Right, now we're gonna look at getting this out of the box. Okay, it looks like it's, okay, it's got these planks here. These are probably gonna be covering up the uh, control sticks. So that's sort of good because sometimes, uh, otherwise what you want to probably where you screw them in afterwards because that could be a lot of stress on them. So I'm gonna shake this out, try to keep it gentle and safe. Okay, uh, there is more in here, by the way. There is also, just like a lot of these Pandora's boxes, they come with some extra buttons. Good, they're so good, we gotta use buttons. We're gonna move this box out of the way. Just gonna toss it to side. There we go. And we're gonna put this unit down. This does feel very light. Let's pull this off. Okay, here is the more packaging here. Okay, it's all covered in plastic. That's a good sign here right off the start. I'm gonna pull this out. Yeah, it's, it's around the same weight as the other unit as the Pandora box, maybe a little lighter. I'd have to put it on the actual scale to tell. So here we go, here's what the unit looks like. Okay, so we got that there. It's a, hmm. Buttons feel okay. But here, that's what they sound like. Okay. They're probably Samwa clones. Hmm. Okay, yep. Joysticks are a little loose. Feel They feel like Samwa clones to me, and that's what they're supposed to be. And Samwa clones are usually okay. I might replace them after. Once they start going bad, I'll replace them with true Samwas. So uh, I would definitely be replacing those with Samwas when they go bad. Uh, there we have a start button. We have a coin button, pause, and another start for part two. It says... AU Star Retro, so All Star Retro Arcade Console. You know, I'm not a big fan of orange, <laughs> uh, but Little Frugal is his favorite color. So, if you look, this is designed a little bit different. It's got a nice bezel end to it, which that's sort of nice too. So does the Pandora, but this looks like it might be a little more comfortable that way. And you definitely see a lot more plastic light space. I've got metal underneath. So, to get to this one, to get inside, looks like to get inside this one's going to be a little different. It's not like a the Pandora where you unscrew the front and it opens up that way. This one looks like you have to take it apart from the bottom and unscrew these bottom screws. Uh, let's take a look over here. Here's what we got. There we zoom in there a little bit. Have the on off button there. I'm gonna do this a little backwards there so I can see a little bit. Here we got our on off power, master power switch right here. Got to do it right there. We have our USBs to make additional controller hookups. This is gonna be the switch here where you hit this button to change monitor output information there. Uh, and change settings. This is your volume that goes across the board for not only your headphones, which will go here, but also the master output if you have it plugged in via HDMI, which is here, and here is your VGA. So it's got your HDMI, VGA, there's your power uh, adapter plug in there. 
You know, I still haven't taken the protective plastic off of my Pandora. I still use it with the plastic on. This one, I'm going to take it off because it's already coming off the buttons. So I'm going to take it off my other one too. So next thing I'm going to do is I want to hook this up and see how it goes. So I'll be right back. All right, Frugal Force, now I'm going to go to the back of the unit, turn on the power switch. Now, something I'll show you in a little bit is it's actually got lights on the system. What I want to see how it goes on here. What kind of screen we hope we have. If it's like the other one, there we go. Nice intro music right off the start. Oh, I like that. It's usually a good sign. You know what? And the sound's automatically coming out of the TV, I believe. Let's make sure. Let me double check with the sound on here too, where the volume is set at. Okay. Left is there. Let's double check. I'm going to turn the volume down all the way down on there. Oh, nope. Sound is coming out of the box right now. So that was that sound was actually coming out of the unit, which was really good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit that button and go to the main menu first, okay? I got to turn my head there. Okay, boom. We're going to go to the menu. Here we go. Key settings, coin settings on free play, exit, start coin, exit after three minutes, select mode after we insert coin, image optimization is disabled. I tend to like disabled because if you have it enabled, what it's going to do, oops, I shouldn't have hit that button. That's going to take me right back there. That's a nice touch rather than going to there. Let's see here because it gives, tells you what to do here. Here's is is uh, to modify. You hit OK with A button, but it do this doesn't say which button's A button on it, so it's probably this one. Okay, you push left and right to change it. Scan lines. You have HD for high definition, and you have disable. Disable is going to show more of the pixelization, whereas HD tends to smooth. And I'm not a big fan of it. These tend to over smooth, but I will check that out. Change our language. Enter game settings. So. Okay, here, look, we have this, coin, one, five minutes, force time on all games disabled, difficulty in life, you can even adjust that. Yep, see there, each game, you can sit there and adjust the difficulty, I guess. So, see, there's a the difficulty, and then you go to the, each game, and you adjust that. So, let's say we're doing Tekken 6, and I'm going to hit A for the difficulty. If I can figure out how to do it. Uh, once again, it doesn't list buttons. Okay. Okay, this I don't know. That's one thing I do like about the other one. Maybe it's it shows the buttons. I wonder if it's going to be mapped like that. I'm going to hit this real quick. I'm going to take a quick look and double check because if it, that is, it'll be A E F on the bottom B C D. So it'll be B C D A E F. If that's the case, it'll be B C D A E F. Oops. This has got your task gamepad settings. Good. I'm going to go back. Okay, now here's where it's cool. See, we have a download chart. Popular chart, popular increasing in new game. This is something new that we didn't have on the other one. Uh, we can go to category and search games by category. So let's see, I click on here. I'm going to click on the arcade. Right now I'm not hooked to the internet though, so it's not going to do that until I get that to the internet. All right, so one of the things that's cool on this, this menu is, is the Wi-Fi setting. That's going to, you have to enable that first to get your Wi-Fi access before you can go to the store. Also, there's a check for update, which is going to update the system if it has any. The current button layout, I'm going to move this down real quick so you can see it on here. Plus, you can see this thing is lighting up and it's changing colors. That's pretty cool. But it's A, B, C, D, E, F, the start, which is a little different than my Pandora, so it took me a little bit to get used to. Uh, but you can remap all the buttons just like before. So I'm going to scroll back up to the screen there so you can see my screen. Okay, there we go. Zoom in just a little bit. And I will do one that's a direct feed too, so don't worry on that. And you could check for update, factory data reset in case you mis make a mistake. It has an extra card in here that actually stores stuff. So I'm going to hit update to see if it has one right off the start. Hardware version, firmware release, build date, check for update. You hit that, you're using the latest version. So it did come with the latest version. That's a good sign. And so now that I've got that, I'm going to enter the games market. Now, when you get to the games market, there's a couple ways here to do it by popular chart, increasing popularity chart, new chart. Uh, you can do it by category, where you can select like an arcade game, a shooting games, fighting games, uh, Game Boy games, you know, or you can even do a search. And you can search different types like Metal Slugs, Mario types of games, Contra games, and see here what's so. Let's say if I select Contra, hit Contra. 
And see, these are going to show me the Contra games that you can download for it. So there's Contra USA, Super Contra, Contra Evolution, uh, another Super Contra. And when you do that, you'd hit A and it'd automatically start downloading. It's going to tell you how many of those there are. This, this is one of uh, five here. There's five different ones there. I'm going to get out of this map. Let's see. You're interested in downloading more Street Fighter? I'd hit Street Fighter. There's 62 different Street Fighters on here for download. I don't know how many are actually in the system. So if you don't have the game on here, you can just go and look. So speaking of the games, right, that's what we want to look into. Now there's a couple other things too. You had the, here's the thing that was a problem with the Pandora, is I had uh, the nines. You had to go through every single one to find what you wanted. And this is classifying it by different types. See, there we have Dreamcast, we have PlayStation, and it tells you up and down selects your game. Right will change pages, and there's 245 pages in here right now. And start will select the game, and this is with all. So if I go back, see two one, there is there it is 2,448 games. It's showing on this system. That'd be a lot to go through. Um, so as you go through each one, it's showing a nice little screenshot of what's on there. And let's see here, like Mortal Kombat 3D. I'd be interested to see how well that works because my other one couldn't play Mortal Kombat. All this WWE All Stars, holy cow! So and this was, so this got some pretty updated, uh, pretty good games. Monster Hunter Three. There we go. Let's turn the volume up a little bit. Okay. If you turn it all the way down, it's just going to come out of the TV. There's not a, a setting otherwise. If you turn the volume up, it's going to come out of both. So, so here, let me turn that up. You'll hear. See, now it's just the box. It actually switches between the two. See here, Les? Now it's just the TV. I tend to like TV because I can run it through my surround sound. All right, let's go back to the games. There we go. So, Final Fantasy. This should have a lot of games. So let's, here's what, as I was talking about the category. Now see here we have your arcade games under the, this category. So we have Tekken. Mortal Kombat 3D, Soul Eater, WWE All-Stars, Monster Hunter 3, Final Fantasy, uh, Daxter, huh, <laughs> Assassin's Creed Bloodlines, so uh, Kingdom Hearts, this has got a lot of games, this is going to be a lot of fun, uh, so now if I go back up to categories, see this is breaking it all up into different categories, there's recent for the games you most recently played supposedly, and a search function where you can actually type in the search to get to where you want. I'm going to go back to category, so now that I'm in category, it says um, left and right will switch your category, up and down selects the game, so right now we're in these kind of games here, um, by the way that was PS, or uh, PPSS, PP, which I think stands for like some kind of arcade game, here's PlayStation games, so like here's some of our Mortal Kombat's for PlayStation. Haha. <laughs> <clears throat> Looks like there is 50 or these these are the PlayStation games. Not a huge load of PlayStation games on here, that's okay. Now we're going to move over to a different category. And remember, if you don't see what you want on here, you can download it. These are N64 games. So we got GoldenEye. Okay, it's not there we go. I just had to wait a little bit. I wasn't waiting time. We have Batman Beyond. Ooh, oof. <laughs> that might be one to take out, right? Um Bomberman Hero, awesome. Gotta have the Bomberman, so it's got the Nintendo 64 in there. Uh, here we go, we're moving over to Famicom games. These are just super Famicom games. So very good, oh cool, excellent. We have some more of that kind that came from like the that series that's very popular in Japan. Bomberman, gotta love the Bomberman. So now I'm gonna move to another category. Here we have SFC, all right, here we go. Very good. Look at that, we got a lot of Doom. Dun, dun, dun. Earthworm Jim, excellent, absolute excellent game. Metroid Prime, very good game. Mario World, so this looks like it's got a lot in here. So now I'm going to move over to another category. This is Game Boy Advance games. So if you want to play Game Boy Advance games, here we are. Lots of Game Boy Advance. And once again, if not what you want in here, you can. Always download more. Awesome, Mario Kart. I wonder if this has Justice League, Mario Party. So let's go down a bunch. Oh, I don't see any Justice League in here right now, but once again, not a problem. You can always download them. Now I'm going to go to Game Boy Color and see we hit the Game Boy Color games. Oh, Elevator Action. This is a great port of Elevator Action, by the way. Look at that vampire game. Yep. X-Men Children of the Atom is in here. 
Here we go. Let's see here. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles UK version. Excellent. That's the first one. Uh, here we go. That this this is Turtles in Time. There's the first one, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles US version. The other one's UK version. All right. So now I gotta go all the way back. Do I? Is there another way to scroll back there? Switch category. Search. Damn. I'm gonna go back and see if I can find that Mortal Kombat. If it loads and plays right, we'll be happy because on my Pandora 9, it just didn't have the power. This is a much more powerful machine. It should be able to play it. Meanwhile, the colors are changing from purple to red to yellow, green. Oh, there we go. I've turned it up a little loud, I guess. All right, let's see. Coin. So that's two cards. Start. We're going to hit start. Whoa. Okay, the volume is way higher than I expected on there. Okay. Okay, we got Luke Kang there. Here we go. I don't know the buttons at all. That's a kick. Okay, it's a punch. I don't remember buttons at all, so for this version, I have to remember figure out what the buttons are mapped to. Hope she finishes me. Finish him! Finish him! Come on! All right. Well, there you go. It runs smooth and things. I just have to adjust the button. Gamepad Utility Wizard. That's going to map out there based on an Xbox controller. But otherwise, it's listed as these are your standard set for keys, just so you know. All right, so next I'm going to plug it in, and we're going to go from there. All right, Fruit Force, here I am with it plugged in right through the HDMI. I'm recording the footage with the Elgato. This is the PlayStation Portable uh, Mortal Kombat. So uh, I have to say I've never played Mortal Kombat on the PlayStation Portable. So this is something... A little bit new. Here we go. I'm using a little bit of fun here with Tai Chi. It's moving smoothly. Controls working great. If I'm on the right track, I should be able to knock her right off. Oh, there we go. Ooh. Yep, everything there is working good. The graphics are going well, moving smoothly. The audio seems right. So let's move to the next game. All right. Now we're going for a little wrestling. <laughs> Once again, uh, another PlayStation Portable game. I'm just trying some games that might be a little harder on the system to run, just to see if it can handle it. I once again, I you know, I've never played this one either, so it should be interesting to see if it runs smooth. All right. And it's a. Now I gotta wait for a little bit. Let's see how the load time handles on this as well. Which I'm assuming we're going to have the load time on the game. If you've played this on the PlayStation Portable, let me know if I had much load time. We've been waiting for. Here we go. I have never felt an excitement level like this I have no clue what I'm doing here with the buttons or anything, so bear with me a little bit on that. That's not the point. The point is to make sure it's playable. I'm using this uh, Austin. I do know this wrestler. Stone Cold Steve Austin. I'm not up on my wrestling, uh, but I know who he is. He... Uh, he has a podcast. If you don't listen to his podcast, definitely check it out. It's a really good podcast. He doesn't just interview wrestlers, so I do like biographies. Uh, and once again, this game looks like the audio is working good. The Everything is working well. There doesn't seem to be any lag or jitter. So, uh, so far, another successful attempt here. I'm going to try another game. All right, now I'm trying Blaze Blue. Another fighting game. All right. Everything sounds good. Definitely sounding really good. Listen to that. And the action seems to be smooth. I'm getting any stutter. Looks like another winner, if you ask me. So let's move to another game. Alright, so here I'm switching to the Nintendo 64. I'm going to be playing F-Zero. Let's see how that sweet mode 7 <laughs> works on this. 
so far it's going pretty smooth. I'm not seeing any issues. And yes, any of the other bad driving is me because I haven't played this game in ages. But it looks like it's performing quite well. Listen to it. Audio sounds good. Video is running well. So Nintendo 64 so far looks like it's passing the test as well. So let's switch to yet another game. Alright, so here I'm switching to a classic game that everybody probably will know. It's a very popular series, and the one that started it all, the Nintendo 64 Super Smash Brothers. Okay, everything seems to be working good. The grow, the... Oh! Fried, but listen, it sounds good too. Throwing those fireballs. Ooh, took a smack from Link. But otherwise, yeah, Super Smash Brothers looks like it's running good and clean and easy. I'm not getting any flicker issues or anything. Uh, so far, it's passing the test on this too. I'm gonna have to say it's looking good. All right, I'm switching to a Super Nintendo port of Battletoads. <laughs> Let's see how this plays. It should play good considering it's handled the other systems well. As I said, this is a more uh, this version has a higher end processor than the Pandora's Box 9 that I was using. Audio sounds good. As you see, the language is a different language, so if you can't handle that, you might have to look for a different downloaded version of it. But really, what do I need to read here? Uh, now, this game does initially, the actual game on cart runs a little slow, and it appears this has the same speed to me as well. It seems to have that little bit of slower feel that you'd get on the Super Nintendo. But I'm not seeing any major issues. Everything seems to be going well. I also actually have the main version of this, which I'd probably play over this version, to be honest with you, which is surprised me this doesn't have that version in it. But, oh well. You know, it gives you more options. Maybe you can download that one. I'll have to check it out. But otherwise, it looks like everything is running like it's supposed to. I'll check out another game. Now, I know this system has a, these kind of things, these Pandoras and stuff, usually have lots of fight games. So I will say, this one has a lot of racing games as well. So if you've been looking for more racing games, this might be the one for you. And I'm going to some, another classic that started it all, none other than Mario Kart. <laughs> okay. It, and by the way, this isn't the uh, Mario 64 I Switch system. This is, is a uh, an emulation port for the Game Boy Advance. I wanted to see how well it does with that. And so far, so good. But we'll only truly know when we fire it up. Yes, I can't read, but I know who Mario is and a lot of these characters, so I don't have to read it to say what it is. Might have to figure my way out through those cups. But that's okay. I played this on the Game Boy Advance as well, so I know what it sounds like and plays like. So let's see how this does. It's going to be a little weird at first to get used to it and figure out the buttons and the stick. But again, you can remap game by game. Okay, good. So far, it's good. This might be a nice way to play it so you don't have to look at your little screen if you don't have a adapter. i got to get used to it, though. <laughs> it's been a long time. Good. Oh, uh, yeah, I think this one passes the test, too. Another uh, well-running side. So Emulation is going good here on this game. I will say I tested out several other Game Boy Advance games that I didn't include on this video, and they were all seem to be running pretty well, too. All right, here I switched to some Contra Hardcore, and this is actually the Japanese version, which is a good thing, in my opinion, because it's a lot easier than the U.S. version. The U.S. version is one hit and dead. The Japanese version, you actually get to take a few hits. So... Uh, I will say I've tried several Genesis ports and things like this, and they ran good. So I have a lot of good things to say about this, and I have some negatives I want to point out to about the system. So let's talk about those. First, the good is it does run a faster processor on this. So it does run a lot of the games better, so you could definitely run the Mortal Kombat. Another good is it has an ability to download more games that you don't have on it. But, well, I'll get into that button in a moment there. Uh, arcade buttons and joystick are definitely usable. But I would switch to Sanwa's later on. That's not a negative, that's a pro. It does have a lot of games on it as well. As, as said, the unit has feels like it's decent quality. The output's good, the audio's good. I'm not running into any real major game issues with some exceptions. So now that brings me to the negatives. One is it doesn't seem like it's built quite as sturdy as the Pandora's box. The Pandora's box I have is metal, whereas this one is a plastic. 
Even though with this plastic, I will say I should have said this in the pros, the LED lights thing is really cool on the front, and I like that. But as I said, it has a plastic box, and it does feel like it's built quality, and I don't think it's going to be an issue, but it's just something to note that it's not as good. But this next thing is a really big issue that I've had with this that I noticed that I think is must be very important to mention. So here it is. This is probably my biggest down vote on this thing. Is One is... It, it can't save PlayStation games. So here's another one. Watch how this Dreamcast goes. And this does this for every Dreamcast game. It goes right to the clock where you have to set the clock kind of deal. Now, granted, you can just skip that hit select. But, <laughs> you know, it has it like it has the dead battery they have to do in every one of them. And that's a little tedious there to have to go through that with every, and it's in every Dreamcast game that I tried that's emulated on this. So while it does it, okay it's you know tedious but there is another problem here and i'm i'm gonna cut to it and i want you to watch this and you should easily see it so we're gonna jump into this game because this is one i was really looking forward to on this to play with an arcade stick and yes it's marvel versus capcom not the first one either i didn't have this one on emulation before and as you see here it looks like it's running smooth and great so i thought this is going to be good. And don't get me wrong, even while I'm saying this, it's not terrible. But there's definitely something that's going to happen that you're going to see. It's playable, but it's aggravating. <laughs> so what I want you to do is pay close attention to the video here. The audio and everything sounds good. It runs smooth. Yeah, buddy. And yes, I like playing with Captain America. Even if I don't know the buttons, I can quickly, quickly figure it out. Though I don't remember on this one which buttons you hit to switch teammates. And it's going to show here because I have to fight with one until I go down. As you see, so far everything seems to be going good. Now keep an eye out. Look at the background. You're seeing artifacts now. And it's going to continue throughout the game. You're going to see a lot of artifacts in the character sprites, in the backgrounds. It's got a lot of pixelization and things back there that are not supposed to be there. And unfortunately, I found this to be an issue on not just this game, but on a couple of the Dreamcast uh, ports to this system. Which leads me to believe that maybe there's an emulator issue. Because I can't believe it's just the individual ROMs. But you're going to notice that with the Dreamcast games. They're not, they seem to play good, but there's gonna be those visual artifacts. If you know why that's happening, let me know in the comments. I'd be really interested to know what is going on there and why this is happening. Still fun to play, but definitely a drawback. It's something that's noticeably not right in the Dreamcast game. So uh, once again, the Dreamcast, you have the reset the clock or skip over that part, like it assumes there's a dead battery kind of situation, and you're gonna have the artifacts involved in that too. Otherwise, the system, you get a lot for your money out of it. Would I say running and get this one? Is it the best one out there? You know, it's probably one of the better ones out there. I'm not a big fan of the orange look, as I said, and the build quality, I like the Pandora's box better which you could always do is just uh, take the brain out of it and swap it into uh, Pandora's box uh, I have been trying to find this exact uh, computer brain for it to pop it you know to see if you can get it separate I even emailed the manufacturer but they've never bothered to respond to me which is not something I like to see either so not a big fan of that Overall, not a bad unit. If you're looking for something to plug and play, and no, it's not going to be perfect, just like no Pandora's box is. A lot of them, for example, once again, you cannot save games on PlayStation. Uh, but one thing that is notable here that I didn't mention earlier, too, is it has save states, which I like because if I, you know, I don't always get a whole lot of time to play, so I can play for 20 minutes, half an hour, save my game, and come back to it the next day. I really like that, and you have that option on this, which you don't have on a lot of Pandora's boxes. So you do have that. Overall, it depends on what you're looking for in a system. If you don't, if you're looking for more retro games, your retro fighter games, your you know shoot 'em ups, 
the side-scrolling beat-em-ups loaded with some wacky puzzles and stuff this is definitely going to be a good one for you if you're looking for things that are going to play the higher end things like dreamcast for for this period it's going to struggle i think a little bit on that as you see it runs smooth but i'm having those issues there with artifacts but didn't give me any problem running playstation portable the actual running of these games all ran smooth and fun and i quite well enjoyed them the audio was great easy to hook up to a tv or a vga monitor you could even build your own arcade cab and put one of these in there and have a really good fun playable unit so you can have a lot of fun for a good price so i hope you enjoyed this review if you did please be sure to hit like subscribe hit that notification bell if you want to, one of the best ways you can help this channel is just leave a comment and a thumbs up right for me there if you feel that you're in a good position to help out the channel don't forget we have a patreon and a subscribe star link down below once again thank you for your time thank you for watching until next time keep it frugal